Can some of you hear me now? Uh, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, we're yeah, all good. Yeah. yeah. I'm really sorry. This Today, this Zoom has been a total nightmare. It wouldn't let me... Um, I could see all of you there, but when I clicked on admit all, it just wouldn't do anything. And I have no idea what's going on. I've never had so many problems with it. Uh, so anyway, it's been very stressful. Let's see. All right, so, um, so I think you guys are there now, so we can get started. <clears throat> um, I see some of you were in the chat. All right, so anyway, hopefully, I saw that they did an up, yesterday it was fine. And this morning when I turned it on, I saw that in, automatically it did an update. And I'm, I'm guessing that update caused the problems today. So I assume that tomorrow there will be another update <laughs> to fix what they wrote today. Um, anyway, so hopefully this will get better. Uh, what I might do is it, it's it's taking like 10 minutes for everyone to log in. So what I'm going to try next time is probably just, you know, start it like 10 minutes earlier, come in earlier, and hopefully then, you know, everything will uh, work better. Anyway, uh, so let's um, let's begin. So this is ITS 350. Um, so let's go ahead and kind of go through the materials. All right, so you should be looking at the, the website of uh, Brightspace, Brightspace, correct? Yeah. Yep. Yes, sir. All right, so, so this is, you know, we're using this, this is a new thing. Uh, as you can see, Brightspace, um, you'll probably see in your own profile that there's 350.001 for the lecture, and then there's 350.002 for the lab. I will not be using uh, the lab one, and instead I'm just going to use everything on 350.001 lectures. So all materials will be there, all homework assignments will be submitted there, and so on. Okay, so you, you've had here the, obviously the instructions on how to connect to this application, Zoom. So I used this last semester and it was great. So if, if we continue to have problems, I may just have to switch to something else. So I don't know what, what else I can use, but that may be a possibility unless they fix, you know, whatever's going on. Um, so the, this is ITS 350, the lectures and labs are going to be on Tuesdays and Thursdays from four to six. Office hours will be on Tuesday and Thursday from two to four. Um, and what I'm gonna ask you there to do is just send me an email if you're gonna be coming into the office hours uh, two to four on Tuesday and Thursday. So that way I can, I won't miss you, you know, given that I have to be online when you come in online. Otherwise, uh, we might schedule something via, um, email, you know, at a, at a different time that might actually work a little bit better. Um, so, so we can accommodate the schedule. Okay, so that's the, the information. So office hours are currently online via this and uh, lectures and labs are also online via this. All right, so today all I'm going to do, uh, it's the first day of class uh, and so of the semester. And so I'm really just going to go over the course, the motivation for the course, um, the materials, you know, where everything is, the syllabus. And then uh, I'll probably get started with a little bit of the lecture. And then on Thursday, we'll do our first lab. So we will start. This is a very lab focused course, right? So we will cover, um, you know, we'll start our, our very first lab. Uh, this is 350, which is basically, uh, it's called systems assurance. It talks about the principles of information assurance and the course correlates really well to cryptography. It's that, you know, it's one of the best examples of how to cover the principles of information assurance. And at the same time, we just get to cover, you know, uh, 
one of the pillars of security, which is, of course, cryptography. All right, so this is a very applied class. Uh, there will be some programming involved uh, in Python mainly. Uh, we'll go over some, do some of the scripts of, of, of the, so that, you know, by writing the code, we'll, we'll get a better understanding of how cryptography works. Um, sometimes we'll use libraries, so it'll be very easy, but sometimes I'll emphasize uh, how an algorithm, a cryptographic algorithm works. Uh, and the goal there is for you to have a certain understanding of, of how the techniques uh, actually work. Obviously, you know, at the end of, uh, the, the course, you know, we'll look at standard um, tools for security, you know, such as um, SSL, TLS, and so on. All right, uh, so here's the announce, announcement. So welcome to um, ITS 350. Um, so as you know, we're using um, this medium. Uh, I have a few additional resources for the course. One of them is I have a separate website. You can see that here if I click on this link. And you guys see the we a website that says ITS 350 System Assurance Cryptography? Yeah. Okay, so uh, I sometimes use this as well. In particular, I use it uh, given that, you know, I'm, we're doing the, the sessions here live this is called synchronous, um, but I'm also recording these sessions as videos. So the videos will be posted on YouTube. It's just the more convenient, you know, it's, I, you know, it's a solid, you know, stable, reliable uh, place where I can put the videos and not worry too much about them. So they, you know, the videos will be placed there usually, you know, a couple of hours or, or by the evening of the day when I do the, the lecture or the lab. And that way you can uh, follow along if you have to miss something. I will be putting the links to the videos here in the calendar. So that way you can keep track of what materials we covered on what day. Okay, so I'll, I'll get to the calendar in a sec. All right, so, you know, uh, systems assurance. So this course covers the implementation of systems assurance with computing systems. Uh, topics include confidentiality, integrity, authentication, non-repudiation, intrusion detection, and physical security and encryption. So uh, I'm sure you've looked at these topics before in 250. We're just now going to look at them in more depth, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna actually spend a little bit more time um, on them, looking at examples, applications of them. Uh, extensive laboratory exercises are assigned. Uh, we will look at encryption algorithms uh, including secret key encryption, uh, the data encryption standard, which is more of a historical uh, algorithm, but it's, it's a easy enough that we can implement it in code. And so we're going to look at it. Uh, I should say that has been replaced but by more advanced versions and algorithms now. Uh, we will also look at PKI, which is the public key infrastructure. So we'll talk about public keys. That's uh, asymmetric encryption. We will talk about algorithms like RSA for asymmetric encryption, and then we will conclude with SSL TLS. All right, so SSL, uh, which is secure socket layers, is basically a set of protocols that work together or a set of encryption primitives or, al or algorithms that work together to achieve the goal of securing your communication. All right, so, so we'll look, we, we need to look at a lot of the pr original primitives before we can actually define SSL. So SSL, what I'm trying to say is that SSL is not something that you can just right away um, define. Uh, it's not something that, um, SSL is not something that you can define right away and, and understand it, you really have to look at a lot of cryptographic primitives uh, or ideas or algorithms before you can actually put together all the elements of SSL. So we'll explore all of that. Um, I like this class, you know, uh, cryptography is, is a very interesting topic. I, I find that students really enjoy the class. They like the labs. 
Um, we're going to do some of the scripting. Usually what I do is I provide the code already and it's just missing a few parts here and there. So it's not like you have to write things from scratch. Uh, but I do like to, to, to get you to think about the algorithms um, a little bit. Okay. Um, as I said, the course is Tuesdays and I noticed that there's two students that I've not been able to let in. And it, so if, if they contact you, just tell them that I've, I've tried and it, for whatever reason. Anyway. Um, so that is the, the class is Tuesdays and Thursdays, four to six via Zoom. Uh, all the information is on Brightspace. Then you can see there's the textbook. So the textbook is, we only need one textbook for this class. I actually, I actually use another textbook myself, uh, kind of delivering, um, Dan, uh, it's a book by Dan Bonet. Um, and I kind of cover, uh, you know, some of the topics from there. But uh, as far as you guys, I think it's much better just to have this book. I think a lot of you who have already taken the cybersecurity classes in our program have this book anyway. If you don't have it, I do recommend that you get it because you will use it in at least three courses. All right, so uh, this is the book that ties really well to the seed labs. And so the seed labs, it's a set of, I'll talk about it later, but it's a set of, of, of laboratories. Um, whenever I pause, it's that somebody has written something on the chat. So even the chat is not working very well today. So if somebody has a question, just, oh, uh yeah you can i think any any addition yeah so some of you what happens is let, let me switch let me turn off they're asking me questions about the um the book so let me stop sharing can you guys see me all right um do you see this yeah, yeah. We see it. all right so so the book is Computer and Internet Security. I think the author, uh, Wen Liang Du, he just uh, has several versions. So he's got one full version, which is Computer and Internet Security. And then he's got, um, he broke it up into smaller parts. So one is Internet Security, one is Computer Security. I think the best solution is just to have the one book that says Computer and Internet Security. Because all the topics in this book are tied to the seed labs and they will be covered in one of your courses anyway, uh, in one of the three courses. And so um, I strongly recommend that you get this one, computer and internet security. Okay. All right, so that's, uh, that's the book. Uh, let me go back to the website. All right. Okay, another chat question. Let's see. All right, so, and feel free to just ask questions. Okay, that, that might be a little bit faster. Uh, all right, so the textbook, as I said, is Computer and Internet Security, a hands-on approach by Wen Liang Du. Get the latest edition. It doesn't really matter, honestly, which edition you get, as long as you get the, the book that has both topics in it so that, you know, you don't have to buy it again later. Um, my office is Anderson 241. Obviously, we're doing this online currently. Um, there, the videos will be hosted on a YouTube channel that I have for all the courses. So you can just click on this whenever you wanna find a video. As I said, I will also be posting them on the calendar. This is a list of the labs. This is a list of the labs. Uh, we're basically doing the seed labs and, and in particular the crypto labs. We will cover a few other things like virus coding um, and malware. But in particular, the, the crypto labs that we're gonna do are the secret key encryption, one-way hash functions, public key cryptography, which is a, a big lab that's broken up into two, 
Uh, and then we have some labs on Python public private key encryption. So, so we'll talk about that. So certainly the, the class is pretty interesting. Um, you know, we'll, the labs you'll find uh, very nice. And I'll have a few interesting uh, practical exams where I'm going to maybe, you know, the, the objective of that exam will be that I have a message that I've written in secret. And the only way to get an A on the assignment is for you to decrypt it, to figure it out. So you have to follow a whole bunch of steps. And I'll, you know, I, I, I've done that in the past and students really like that. Okay, so, uh, you know, that's something that we will do later on. Okay, so let's talk about the environment and what you need for this class. So for this class, uh, this is going to be all on the Linux uh, environment and you're going to need to use the CDBM. So the CDBM is the Seed Labs uh, Ubuntu pre-built virtual machine. Okay, you can see that here. I provided the link for it. So you can just download it off of the internet. You will need to have VM, VMware workstation. So I, I, I believe a lot of you already have it. If you don't have it yet, if you don't have it yet, uh, you can get it from Donna. Don't use the Kali VM that you use in 250. The reason being that the seed Ubuntu pre-built, as the name implies, pre-built machine already has a lot of the tools that you need. And so if you use the Kali VM, what's gonna happen is you might have to install some of those programs. And you know, so you're just creating more work for yourself. Uh, my recommendation is just download that seed VM um, you, you really only need one, um, one, one VM for all the labs. I, there, I don't remember that there are that many that require more than one. And so, you know, get it. It'll make your life easier because everything is going to be installed there. Could you use the Kali VM? Sure. But as I said, you're, you're just going to add more work um, by installing the programs every time. And, you know, some things may not work immediately. All right, so that's that's the entire environment for the class. Um, you know, in when we're when we're physically in, in in the classroom in the past, we have used Raspberry Pis to to kind of create um, um, routers, and so that so that we could explore certain things related to firewalls. Uh, this semester, we may not be able to that, given that we don't have access to the to the lab. But uh, we can always just virtualize that. So that's probably what we will do. We will just uh, implement that on a, on a virtual machine. But in, in essence, basically all you need for this semester is the seed Ubuntu pre-built virtual machine, VMware, VMware workstation, and Python. Okay, so I'm gonna click on the seed VM. So if you're new to the course, or to the program or anything, and you've never seen the Seed Labs, this is the website for the Seed Labs. You can see here that they have two VMs, the 1204 and the 1604. We are currently using the 1604, uh, which is the latest version of this. So just go ahead and download it, um, and you can use it. I believe that the way that it downloads is that you still have to go to VMware. You have to create in VMware uh, a disk and then you have to follow the steps there so that you can tie that disk to what you're going to download here. Um, but that's, you know, that's basically the process. So it's not a VM that's, that's already functioning, let's say. Instead, it just has, but that's a simple process in VMware. All right, so you just follow a few steps and you'll be able to get the VM working. So my suggestion for you for, um, between today and Thursday is just do this, okay? Go to, you know, get set up with VM, VMware, download this, uh, you know, the SIP file, uh, and then, you know, begin the process of creating your virtual machine, which will be a Ubuntu Linux machine, okay? And then once you have that on Thursday, you'll be ready to start the first lab. All right, we will, so here's the, the calendar. If you look over here, today is August 25th, 
And so we will be uh, today, as I said, I'm just going to go over the what I'm discussing right now, the syllabus, et cetera. And then uh, I'll probably get started a little bit with the lecture. Um, I'll do a kind of a review of what you learn in 250, just to remind you of, of a little bit of the terminology. And then after that, um, you know, we'll start, we'll just basically get started with the lab on, on Thursday. And that's the best way to just get started. You know, you, you'll have a series of tasks to complete and it should be a pretty fun lab actually. Students really enjoy it and um, I'm sure you will. All right, as you can see, the calendar right now is kind of it's kind of empty. It's just got the dates. Um, I as 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 we go along through the semester, I will be updating all of these. You know, like intro today and, and which lab we're doing the um, secret key lab or symmetric key encryption lab on Thursday. And so I will post that, and I will also add the links to videos on here. Okay. Are there any questions before I leave this website? The dates are indicated here. As you can see, we meet Tuesdays and Thursdays. October 13th is, um, is a holiday. So is November 26th, which is Thanksgiving. Finals will be December 14th through December 18th. I think I had a question here. No questions here. No, no questions. All right. Um, All right. So I, I have one really quick. <laughs> yeah. um, when are labs typically due for this? That's class? a good question. That's a very good question. So let's let's see how that would work. So for instance, you have your um, your lab this Thursday, August twenty seven, right? So the symmetric key encryption. That's usually a one week lab. That means that this lab is due on September the third by 10 p.m. So, so for every lab, I usually assign it on Thursday and then you get one week or maybe two weeks if it's a longer lab. All right, cool, thank you. Yes, yeah, so it should be pretty simple. Uh, all the, you're gonna submit your labs on uh, Brightspace, okay? So we can uh, go back to Brightspace right now. Okay, here we are. So you guys are seeing Brightspace, I assume. All right, so this is very new, but um, basically we have a content subfolder here. So if you click on table of contents, you will see that that's where I have put all the materials. I haven't put everything yet uh, this semester since um, it's a new system. I've just been trying to figure out the best layout for things. Uh, so I've, I've posted, I think, uh, information for like the first four or five weeks, but I haven't posted everything yet. Um, so you can see here, pretty much everything will be posted on here as far as materials related to lectures and labs. Uh, the first folder is just the admin folder, which will contain the syllabus. We'll go over the syllabus in a second. It also con contains the link to the website I just showed you. Okay, um, and so we'll go over the syllabus in a sec. I had actually opened this already, but because I had to restart my machine, I lost everything. So let's, um, all right, so let's continue. All right, uh, if you ever lose your, the Zoom instructions, there's a link to them here. Very important. As I said, if, if I have to change this, well, this uh, platform, then other instructions would come, will be, would be added here. Resources, um, I posted basically, we will be using Python uh, this semester for a little bit of scripting. So if you haven't, um, if, you're, if, you're, if you don't remember Python or if you're not familiar with it, I would recommend that you go through this, this lab background files Python um, and just try to work out, you know, try to write this code, become familiar with it. Um, just so that you, you, Python is a very easy language to understand, but if you haven't looked at it before, th this will certainly help you. Not all labs will involve scripting, only a few of them. There are labs that actually will just be command line type of things. 
on the Linux terminal, but there might be some labs that do require a little bit of and of course, I don't expect you guys to be uh, exceptional programmers in Python, so I, I will provide as much code as possible. My goal, as far as the as far as the scripting, is not to teach you programming or to have you learn about scripting. It's really about understanding the algorithms and how they work. Because if you understand the programs themselves, the code, the algorithm then that'll better help you to understand the actual concepts of cryptography, which is really the goal of the class, is just to really understand, you know, cryptographic um, ideas. So uh, here you can see the okay, question on the chat. So I have a question on, do we need Python in the VM or host machine? So probably in the VM and the great thing about the seed VM is that it already has Python installed. So you don't have to do anything. Um, that's, you know, probably the best thing to do. So it should be there. Okay. Um, so we have the, the topics for this week and like really like the, we don't really have that much um, not all of these are coding based. Some of them are, some of them aren't. But really the, the objective is to better understand the algorithm. So the, the very first module of this class this week uh, is called secret key encryption. And you can see here, I already have some slides. I, I will start with those slides today. And with the slides, I'll kind of do a review of uh, 250 and then get started with the idea of secret key encryption. So secret key encryption ties into uh, to this concept of symmetric key encryption. So that's really what we're going to talk about is, you know, what is symmetric key encryption? So usually cryptography is divided into two areas, symmetric encryption and asymmetric encryption. And so we will, as you might imagine, start with symmetric encryption. It'll probably be a, the simpler of the two. Um, and that will help us to progress in our, in our understanding. Here, additionally, you can see in this module, there's a few additional files because there are files relevant to your lab that you will have to do this week. But I'll explain all of this, uh, you know, between today and next um, Thursday, so you don't have anything to risk. Right now, I'm really just laying out the structure. I feel this is important, especially now that everything is online. I want to be very clear and specific about where everything is and and what's expected. So usually, even though I don't like to write like week one, week two, week three, every one of these lines after these three represents what we're doing that week. Okay, so as an example, this week we are doing secret key encryption. Next week we are doing hash functions, right? Then the following week we're starting with public key cryptography. After that, we have RSA, which is an algorithm uh, for asymmetric encryption. And then from there, we're just going to continue with the different topics. Okay. You can see, for instance, for next week, I have crypto hash and so on. Let's see. I have another question on the chat. Okay. Yeah. When, when you uh, connect to, um, when you connect to this, Zoom, please make sure that you put your names on, 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 on it fully so I know who it is that I'm letting in. So if you can put your like your first name and last name, that would be very helpful. Because okay. I also have to take role and so I'm just taking pictures right now. And if, if your full name is not there, it might be difficult for me to, to check you in the, in the system. Okay, so that's secret key encryption hash functions. As you can see, I have some slides. I have the information on the lab. So there's a combination of both. Uh, and that's how I'm going to approach everything. Once you have an assignment, so I had some questions about assignments, for instance, in secret key, if you notice, I haven't yet added the link for you to submit your homework. But eventually, uh, in this secret key module, which is what we're doing this week, I will add a new link and that link will be where you, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll allow you somehow 
to submit your assignment, okay? So what do you submit when you submit an assignment? So really, uh, okay, I have another question. Uh, so what do you, what do you do when you submit an assignment? What do you need to submit? So, so basically all you have to submit is a, a document. Okay. All you have to do is submit a document, uh, which can, you know, which should be probably a, a PDF document. So what you will do, it, it, we, and, and I call it in, in this class, in my class, is a lab report, okay? So the lab report needs to include, you know, some information about the problems that you're solving, and then your solution, maybe your code or the sequence of steps that you took, you know, the, the commands in Linux, et cetera. And then after that, you need to provide evidence that you were able to complete the task. You know, whatever it is, whatever it is that the task has to do, maybe it's an encryption and a decryption. So then you have to provide, you know, a type of a screenshot that is convincing and it shows evidence that you completed the task. Does that make sense, guys? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you really just need to submit a report with the steps, commands, and of course, uh, evidence that you did the work, that it, that it worked, that you did it and that it worked, right? So. Uh, I, I do all the grading. Uh, and so, uh, you know, this is a good way um, for me to know how students are doing in the class. And so I will check very carefully. So make it very clear, uh, you know, when you, you know, when you write your report, so it's easy for me to grade. Them. All right. Anyway, so that's the discussion of the 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 Brightspace. So I've talked about the website. I've talked about Brightspace. Now let's go ahead and move to the syllabus, right? So I wanna cover the syllabus, which is the kind of official document. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So I need to share. Can you guys see my, uh, the syllabus now? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yep. All right, great, thank you. Okay, so the syllabus, uh, again, you know, officially this is fall 2020. I'm Professor Calix. Uh, my office is Anderson 241. Uh, my contact information is there. Uh, best way to contact me is via email. Just send me an email. I usually check that pretty regularly. Um, the class is Tuesdays and Thursdays, four to six. Um, office hours are Tuesday and Thursday, two to four. The prerequisite for this class is um, ITS 250, which you, you, I'm sure you've taken already. And as I said, um, probably update this, in the textbook I recommend is Computer and Internet Security, okay, uh, by Wen Dan Du. Definitely that's a, the book to have. Yeah, I already talked about the course description. This provides a list of some of the topics. So as you will see, we'll cover a lot of topics, but mainly we cover a lot of things because a lot of things tied to the principles and that'll become clearer as I start the lecture. Um, but the majority of the class, I would say a good 70% of the class is related to encryption and cryptography. All right, grading. So I know you guys always wanna know about the grading. So uh, as you can see, there's exams is 30% of your grade. There will be three exams, exam one, exam two, and the final exam. All exams are comprehensive. Um, they used to be written exams that were closed notes, but with a cheat sheet. Now with this period of time that we're going through, um, you know, I have to get creative with the exam. So we'll see uh, how we do it. It might be something on Blackboard that's just during the fi a fixed period of time, or it might be a take-home exam. We'll, we'll just see, it, it depends. 
Okay, so 30% of your grade is exams, three exams. Each one is worth 10 points. Uh, they will, the exams will be on around week six will be the first exam. The second exam will be around week 12. And the third exam will be during finals week. 10% of your grade is going to be uh, either quizzes, which I do quizzes, pop quizzes sometimes, so be ready for that. Um, when we were in the classroom, I would just, you know, have you take out a sheet of paper and solve a little problem uh, in, in, the, in the classroom. Now, with how things are, are um, I'll have to figure, figure it out, but we might still, you might still do, um, pop quizzes here and there. Not too many, but you know, I usually like to do that. 10% of your grade is also professionalism in the classroom. And that's just, you know, attending, asking questions, things like that. Uh, the term project is 10%. So you can see that's not a lot. Um, the class does have a, a project component. And it's really a simple thing at the end of the semester where you implement something that you learn in the class. It doesn't have to be a project that includes everything. Instead, it just has to be a project that's related to one of the topics. Okay, so in this class, we cover mainly cryptography, but we cover biometrics, we cover several other things. And so you could pick one topic in particular. And, and the goal really is that you research something a little bit more, and then that you, uh, so for instance, one topic that students have done in the past is they do uh, cryptocurrency because cryptocurrency is related to encryption. And so they do research on how cryptocurrency would work, how it relates to cryptography, and then how, uh, you know, and then they show some kind of a demo. So I always like, like the idea of having demos. And that, that is basically the idea that, you know, you wanna encourage students to implement um, solutions, right? So you want to, you want students to, to implement something that they learn and see how it works. And so you'll basically for your project, you will need to do a demo. At the end of the semester, you will have to do presentations. So the week before finals is the week when you um, do your presentations for the, for the class. Okay, so that's the term project. And then finally, as you can see, homework, lab assignments, et cetera, you know, labs basically, that's 50% of your grade. So make sure that you pay a lot of attention to the labs because if you miss, if you start missing labs, that's, that's where usually I see students that fall behind. Okay, so certainly make sure you're doing the labs. Um, there's a lot of material around the labs. And so they should be, um, you should be able to solve them. They're not necessarily that difficult, but they just take some work, but they are very interesting labs. Okay. Are there any questions about the grading criteria? Nope. Nope. Okay, no. No. Uh, will there be any review or anything like that before the exams come up or? Uh, usually I don't do reviews. <laughs> um, you can ask questions but it, everything is comprehensive. So I would have to cover a lot of topics. You kind of just have to stay on top of things. Uh, okay. my exams are usually not <laughs> uh, multiple choice or true or false or more of essay type questions or, you know, explain that kind of thing. <clears throat> because really, you know, I, you will under, it'll become more obvious as we start going into the lecture, but you'll see that, you know, it's, you have to understand certain concepts really well, you know, about symmetric keying, about encryption in general. So, so there's a, a bit of understanding. It's not just about like definitions or even coding. There's, you have to understand how to use certain tools appropriately. And so there will be a lot of explaining and, and, and so the exams will be essay type. Okay. All right, cool, thank you. Yes, sure. All right, so we covered the grading. Uh, course policies, read the syllabus. Really the main thing, main issue that I always have 
is uh, related to turning in assignments. Okay, so assignments should only be submitted on Brightspace. Okay, uh, you, uh, I will only accept assignments that are submitted on Brightspace if you know I can't I, I can't receive homework via email because it just fills up my inbox and, and, and it makes it impossible to do anything. So that those are really the the main things. Submit your homework assignments on Brightspace and submit them on time because you will have a you know due dates. And once the due date has passed, the Dropbox is usually closed. So you, you will not be able to submit the homework. So no late assignments and submit on Brightspace. That's really the, the basics of this. Okay, read through all of this in the syllabus. A lot of important information. When you're on campus, here's all the security telephone numbers, so make sure you look at them. Also, I believe there's um, some mental health um, contact information. Okay, so you can also take a look at that and, and contact them at PNW if, you know, you know, this situation is overwhelming to you. All right, now that we've covered a little bit of the syllabus, let's now focus on the topics a little bit more specifically. So this schedule here, which is subject to change, it usually never changes, but you know, it, it could change. Uh, this is the list of topics and kind of the order in which we will cover them. As you can see here, um, we start today with just a basic introduction, kind of a review syllabus overview of everything. That's really the, the whole focus. And we start with one lab. This lab doesn't really require, you know, a, a lot of not, not knowledge beforehand, right? This the kind of thing that you can just, the lab is meant to kind of ease you into the, the seed labs, ease you into secret key encryption. You'll be using command line types of things. If you've never used Linux for whatever reason, don't get uh, stressed by it you know, it'll come to you. Okay, so you know, you just have to practice a little bit. Uh, usually we cover Linux in ITS 372, which is a, as a second year course. So hopefully, I, I know some of most of you have taken it. But if, if you haven't done so, that's the course that would help you. However, we don't want to slow you down in your progress through the classes. So if you take 350 before 372, just be aware that you kind of have to spend a little bit more time on Linux. And you guys have used Kali in 250, so you also have that. And I believe in 135, you cover it a little bit as well, possibly. All right, so then the other topics is, you know, starting on week two, we have block ciphers and cryptographic tools. Uh, then we have in, uh, hash functions. Uh, as you can see here, I wrote integrity. And the reason being that we're gonna explore this class from the point of view of the principles of information assurance which are confidentiality, integrity, availability. And then we're going to tie those to specific tools in security, such as, you know, symmetric key, asymmetric key, and so on. After hash functions, we will cover again uh, symmetric encryption. We'll get a little bit more into that. And we will cover um, public key cryptography or PKI. Right. This gets now into asymmetric encryption and the idea of public and private keys. Okay. We will also explore a concept called digital signatures, which is very interesting. And so a lot of these things in cryptography, they build on previous things. So in this class, for instance, to understand signatures, you have to understand symmetric key, block ciphers, and you also have to understand hash functions and you also have to understand public key infrastructure. So three, three primitives, three previous primitives are required just to implement a signature. And so that's really what makes this class really fun and interesting is that as you, as you start to learn more about one tool, then you can build more complex tools. For instance, you know, the classic example I, I like to give is, is this idea of the blockchain 
and Bitcoin, right? So Bitcoin, all this concept, it's really based on hash numbers, right? It's really based on hash numbers. And so somebody had to really understand hash numbers and hash functions in order to then from that primitive design a structure like blockchain, blockchain and Bitcoin, okay? For instance. So we build much more complex uh, techniques, methodologies to be able to do things. Uh, at the, so the more we have of these primitives, the more complex and advanced uh, methodologies we can build. Okay, after PKI and signatures, we're gonna cover encryption uh, with RSA. We're gonna, RSA is an algorithm that will allow us to apply encryption to achieve the goal of confidentiality. But we can also use RSA and encryption to achieve the goal of authentication. So we just have to understand the difference between these two approaches. And that should be very interesting how we do that. Okay? But we will explore that. We will also learn before we get to SSL, we will also learn about crypto performance. Performance has to do with the, with the you know, like for instance today, right? Let's say, I'm gonna give you an example. So today it took a very, 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 very long time for us to connect to this um, Zoom meeting. Now the, the, the Zoom connections are encrypted. And so it's possible that their implementation of their cryptography was not very efficient, right? And so that would affect performance. Obviously that was an undesirable thing because today it just, it was a nightmare to get connected to this. And so my point is that whenever you mention <coughs> cryptography, <coughs> which has to do with security, you also have to take into consideration performance because an algorithm that is very secure, but is, is kind of, has bad performance is not a great algorithm and people are not gonna use it. So the example would be that although what they may have done uh, what Zoom may have done might be very secure, but performance wise is terrible. And so I'm gonna have, I may have to look for something else. Okay, and so that's kind of the idea. So performance relates to that. And so we will cover that in the, um, in the course, in one of the labs, performance. And then once we have that, we will have a lot of the elements to be able to look at SSL, All right, SSL stands for secure socket layer. And it's just basically now a complex methodology that uses a lot of primitives. Um, and it's basically all the primitives that we had would have covered at that point in the past eight weeks. After that, uh, we will also look at other things like firewalls and intrusion detection systems and tie that to access control. So we will spend a, uh, some time on that. Uh, we will look at malicious software, but we will still continue to look at encryption algorithms. You can see here, uh, DES is the data encryption standard. This is one algorithm that even though now this algorithm DES is no longer the desirable algorithm to use, it's still useful to look at it because it helps you to understand how the algorithm works, okay? Uh, and that will give you some insight. You, can, you will see that basically a lot of these algorithms are just basic algebra. Uh, and so it'll give you some insight into how they are developed. And it'll just, you know, further help you to, to have a good understanding about them. AES would be the more advanced version of DES, but I have found in the past that AES is a little bit more complex to implement for students. And that's really the reason why I don't make AES an algorithm that you have to implement in the class. And so we're just gonna stick with DES, which should be a good, um, you know, for learning. After that, we, all, I, uh, we always cover, and most of the courses, I'm sure you covered this in, in 250, and we will dedicate one week to uh, the risk and control matrix risk assessment. So I, you know, that's a very non-technical, um, weak, but at the same time, I find it to be, or we find it to be in the program, very important. And so we will cover, you know, these topics uh, in some detail. And then finally, we'll just wrap, wrap up. As I said, you know, really the class 
it's, it's not like we're listing, you know, oh, symmetric key, asymmetric key, uh, RSA, this, yeah, check, check, check. Instead, the, motiv the, th the motivation of the class is the principles of information assurance. So authentication, you can see that here, authentication, confidentiality, you can see that up here, um, and, and all of those, right? And so integrity. And so those are the driving forces, and then we tie, you know, uh, techniques of cybersecurity to them. So for instance, biometrics, right? Biometrics. So how many of you have heard of biometrics? I have. Right. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, so what's an example of a biometric for security? A fingerprint reader. Fingerprint reader, exactly. And so basically that means that when you use a, a fingerprint reader, a biometric, you're authenticating, right? And so that's one of the principles. And so, you know, that's what, that's how the course works, right? We have the thing that we're trying to achieve, the principle, uh, and then we have the actual technology that we want to, um, that, that is associated with that, with that principle. So the, a good example of this is biometrics and authentication. So I'll spend some time just on that, uh, you know, and then finally we'll cover some internet security protocols, uh, TLS in particular, just kind of give a, an introduction to that. Um, so SSL, TLS is like the implementation of SSL um, that you use for like VPN and, and, and things like that. Um, so we'll cover that. Some more, you know, final, fi some final ideas of, of cryptography, um, maybe a, a few of the more advanced topics in cryptography. Uh, but a lot of what we're gonna cover in the course is still pretty relevant. So it's still pretty much what's, what's out there. Just for the, just the fact that it might be too complex sometimes, I, I end up using simpler versions of it. So yeah, so internet security protocols and some special topics. Okay, so that's really the, the, the key ideas uh, and, and the, the schedule. Okay, so that concludes the syllabus discussion. Are there any questions on the syllabus? Nope. I don't think so. No. Okay, great. So I won't come back to this. Pretty much the grading is, is, is how, you know, how it's set here. Uh, I've been using that for several years and it works fine. Just remember, you know, a couple of recommendations. Don't miss homework assignments, please. That's critical. Don't expect me, don't expect that, okay, you know, semester, we got three weeks left. Can I send homework assignment from week one? <laughs> Please don't ask me about that because you know you you can't right. So you make sure you submit your homework time, please, um, and also make sure that you submit on Brightspace, which is the the medium. All right, great. Okay, so that concludes our discussion of the syllabus, and it concludes the discussion. I'm going to close the syllabus. And it concludes the discussion of Brightspace. So I believe you have, um, you know, you have all the information on Brightspace. So now let's go ahead. We are ready at this point. To the slides. All right, so now at this point, I'm going to formally get started with um the class the class topics don't forget for thursday make sure that you have uh the vm ready to go so i kind of i'm going to talk a little bit about the lab on thursday just to kind of explain what i want you to have so I need to share Brightspace. Okay, I'm going to share this back. Okay, so you should be seeing uh, my the Brightspace site. So the first 
So next Thursday, once you have your VM and VMware ready to go and the VM, don't, don't wait to create the VM on Thursday during the lab because you might fall behind as we're discussing things. Instead, try to have it ready. So on Thursday, this is the first thing that we will do, secret key encryption. So if you click on this, you will see I've provided some files in here. So this is the slide, ITS350 intro. So this is the slide that I will use um, today to get started with the topics. And then for the lab, you will need these four files. So this one, this one, this one, this one. This one is basically an image, a picture of a, of a rectangle and a circle, I think. GHEX, GHEX is a program that is probably already installed in uh, the CVM 1604, but in case it, you can't find it or it's not available, you can use GHEX. So GHEX is what is called a hex editor. So why do we need a hex editor in, uh, in this class? So usually when you have a file that is text, you can just open a text editor and modify the file. You can change the letters, change the wording, etc. However, in cryptography, sometimes all we want to do is we want to change just one bit, one bit of the entire piece of information. You can have an encyclopedia in there, right? You can have an entire encyclopedia file, and then you run that encyclopedia through some kind of an encryption algorithm. Yeah, I have a question. So <laughs> what was I saying? Uh, so I have a, a dictionary, you know, an encyclopedia, and it has been encrypted, right? So, and then, I'm, and then maybe the lab will say something like, okay, now go ahead, go into that file that has been encrypted and modify just one bit. So to be able to modify one bit, you need to have you know, some kind of an editor, what is called a hex editor. You guys know, of course, that information is represented as bits, binary. We can also have it in hex format, you know, different formats, right? ASCII format and so numerical format. And so in this case, the file is going to, with this program, we'll be able to open the file in its hex format and we can just go in there and maybe modify just one bit. Once we modify though, let's say we take that encrypted, that whole encrypted file and we just modify one bit. Do you think that just, imagine there's millions of bits in that file, millions of bits. But imagine we just change one bit using this hex editor. Do you think that that would significantly change the file? What do you think? Probably, yeah. Probably. Well, yeah. So it, it, in terms of, so, so, the, so the, the way to answer it is in terms of integrity, whether you change one bit or a thousand bits, you've changed the integrity of that file, right? Because integrity, one of the principles of information assurance is about maintaining, you know, the wholeness of, of the object. And so by changing just that one bit, you've, you've changed it. In other cases, you might look at it from another point of view and you might say, well, do we lose all the information? Well, it depends on the algorithms, right? So there are some algorithms that use, that takes uh, information from one section to encrypt other sections. So you might imagine that in that case, changing one bit will actually change a lot. And then there are other algorithms that don't actually only are very localized. So they don't really modify, they don't really use a part of one section for another section. And so that's basically part of the lab this week. You know, that's what we want to understand. What are the differences between these uh, encryption algorithms? This is called block cipher encryption. Okay. And so we will explore that, um, you know, this week and next week. So next week, I like to write on the, on the whiteboard. And so on the whiteboard of this device, and so I will next week, the lecture that I'll do will be more of a me writing on the whiteboard and providing some of the, some of the information. Okay. 
but today I'm just kind of, you know, it's first day. So I'm not, I'm not really, I'm just kind of like superficially covering things uh, to get everyone motivated of what the class is and to understand everything, especially because it's so online and it's a little bit more confusing. All right, so anyway, so that, so I think that explains what the GHEX program is for. You will use it several, for several labs, usually whenever you wanna modify a file at the hex level. And it's usually a file, either the unencrypted version or the encrypted version. And the goal is basically to see, hey, what happens? You know, I change a bit, what does it look like? The picture is really the same thing. We're gonna play around with a few tricks to see, you know, how much of the original image we can see after encryption, right? And so that's part of the lab as well. I provided the ASCII code because as, as you might imagine, we can use the ASCII table as reference. And then finally, uh, as I said, we're using the seed lab. So you can see here, uh, if you click on crypto encryption, you can see the actual document. Can you guys see it? The document, it says secret key encryption. Yeah. Yep. Great. So um, you can also always just go to the Seed Labs website and download the labs from there. Um, you know, it's really, it's really up to you what you choose. All right, uh, but basically this lab we will discuss on on, uh, on Thursday. We will go over these topics on Thursday. And so I will discuss on Thursday what it is that we have to do. Uh, usually um, we only do up until 3.4. So we'll cover those topics and then, you know, and that's it. It's a very quick, simple little lab. It's meant to just, you know, help get started. I sometimes I provide this version and, and, and the version of the seed labs. I might just provide the link for it. Uh, you can take a look at both labs. Um, all right, they're they're very similar. I mean, you know, they sometimes they something changes a little bit. Okay, so basically, whenever you're doing these lab assignments this is what you have to solve, okay? What you have to solve is the Seed Labs document. And then you can create a report from this, which is what you will submit to me. You don't have to submit this original document, just your results, questions, and answers, all right? So that's gonna be the lab. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of idea. Don't worry about other labs for now, just focus on this one. We'll take our time on Thursday to get everyone started. So if you have questions, you know, you can ask and we can proceed. Okay. All right. So I think that uh, that's enough as far as the lab explanation for Thursday. Now let's go ahead and just start with these slides. Okay, can you see my, uh, my slides? Yep. Yes, sir. Okay, great. Excellent. So, um, so let's look at the slides. Um, I'm not going to cover everything in these slides because the first part of it is just a review. Okay, so um, Really, it's just there for you to read. It's, it's basically a lot of what a lot of the terminology that you learned about in 250. Has anyone at this point tried to install VMware? I already had it installed, so. Okay, but have you, have you tried it? I mean, have you tried that it's working? Yeah. At this point, you know, maybe today or yesterday tried VMware and they saw that it was working in fact. Yeah, I have yeah. it up and running on my computer. 
Excellent. All right. Yeah, that, you know, everything is breaking right now. So I, I just wanted to make sure that. Can we just use VirtualBox? Uh, VirtualBox. If it'll run the VM, sure. Uh, yeah, I got to set it up and it works. Yeah, this, uh, this semester, VMware, you might need, so, you, so the, the VM that you're going to download requires you to follow a few steps. So remember, it's, the VM is not ready. You have to go in there and create like, uh, I think it's called create new external hard drive or new hard drive, and then follow the, the wizard that allows you to create a functioning VM. I'm not sure if you can do that in VirtualBox. I know you can do it for sure in VMware. So that's the only issue. So you have to try it basically and see what happens. Make sense? All right, so, so let's continue. So these are the slides. Uh, I will go through, so, so I'm, you know, basically if you look at them, Hey, just provide some of the definitions of computer security or cybersecurity. Um, in particular, you know, we know about this. This is something that you learned about uh, CIA, right? Confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Um, and so now we're just going to extend this to a few more pillars. Um, and you know, today and, and you know, the next week we're just going to explore the meaning of these, okay? Because it's very important that we have a, a good basis of, 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 of why these are important, okay? So confidentiality, integrity. So who can tell me what, who can give me some examples, for instance, of what is confidentiality versus what is integrity versus what is availability? Well, integrity is basically ensuring that the uh, the data file or whatnot has not been altered in, in any way that was not intended. Right. Um, availability in is actually accessing said data. What, what is availability, sorry? Actually being able to access the data. Like right, data. availability is that when you try to log into Zoom, it's working, right? So if someone had done a denial of service attack on our Zoom today, we would not be able to join it. Therefore, availability was compromised. Yes. And then would confidentiality just kind of be like permissions? So ensuring that only the people who are supposed to see it, see it? Exactly. That's a very good definition. So confidentiality is that, you know, you're, you're, you're sending some information and no one can read that information. It's confidential. Exactly. And although it seems trivial, those are very important principles. And that, that's really what, why with cryptography, um, we'll be able to see the subtle differences between one or, and the other and actually how we can build cryptographic solutions that achieve, you know, you might say, I need to build a cryptographic solution that achieves confidentiality, but also integrity. And then you might say, but what about authentication? Do we need to have a password? Is there another way of achieving authentication? Well, as it turns out, there is one through cryptography. And so we're gonna explore that as well. Exactly, okay. So, you know, these are the key concepts we've talked about it, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So I think you, you guys have covered this in 250 and it's pretty clear. Um, some of the, you know, security has challenges, right? Um, and so there's a lot of them you can see here, it's a lot of problems. And basically, you know, so it, it's, so we don't wanna structure security around all of these challenges. Instead, we wanna structure it in, in, in terms of the goals. And these are the things that we're trying to achieve with the pillars, okay? Here's some additional terminology that, you know, that you learn. Probably, you know, what is an adversary, an attack, countermeasure, which is a control, security policies, threats, vulnerabilities, assets. So just make sure you read through this. Um, it's kind of a review of what we've covered. This is just a, a diagram of the relationship of all the things, all the terms. Okay. 
more terminology on vulnerabilities and attacks. So again, this is just a review. You know, what are countermeasures? So countermeasures are the tools that prevent things, detect things, or help to recover. Okay, a firewall, for instance, uh, things like that. Okay, and then, you know, some additional uh, terminology of the consequences, threat consequences, what can happen, disruption, usurpation, uh, misappropriation, and so on. So these are all, just go through these, these words. Um, right, then we have some threats related to either availability, confidentiality, or integrity. Uh, so for instance, if software is deleted, right, it's no longer available. Confidentiality would be affected if you make an unauthorized copy of the software and so on. So definitely read through this. Um, this is more of a review, but I'll get to, now this slide I kind of like, uh, it basically provides a lot of the different technologies, a lot of the different technologies. These are, this is a list of security controls. These are controls and you can see you have antivirus, firewall, firewall anti-spyware, VPA. What does the VPN, why is a VPN a security control? What does it provide? Provides an encrypted tunnel to a ser service provider. Okay, and see that, that I, I like that you gave me that answer because that answer tell me, tells me how it works, right? But what does it achieve? As you said, it, it provides an encrypted tunnel, correct, to a, to a location. But what does VP, VPN achieve, actually? Confidentiality. Confidentiality, there you go. So, so, that, so that's why these principles are important, is because we can frame things quickly in terms of what we're trying to achieve. It, there might be a situation where I don't need confidentiality. I may just need integrity, or I may just need authentication, and so on. And so, so that will be a little sort of a game that we're gonna be uh, addressing this, this semester, all right? That terminology, but good, very good. Uh, other controls like uh, vulnerability patch, patching, uh, obviously encryption, intrusion detection, more encryption, uh, web filtering, intrusion prevention systems, endpoint security, log management, forensics, uh, PKI or public key infrastructure, biometrics, and so on. So we will not cover all of these, right? We will, you know, you have courses like forensics, for instance, is covered in another course, but these are all controls. I, I like this list actually, and uh, we will cover some of these, okay, in this this semester. In particular, the ones that's, that really tie in really well, that are good examples of, of the principles like everything in cryptography, biometrics, um, and firewalls for access control. Okay. Okay, so definitely go through this. It gives you a definition of security policy, uh, which is just, you know, a non-technical document uh, explanation of, of what should be the, the rules basically as far as security in, in, in an organization. Okay, so go over these as well. These are just more, more of a review. You know, definition of risk, legislation, Okay, and that, that bef just before this slide, we, um, we finished the review of 250. And so at this point here, you know, what is the cyber battlefield? That's really where we begin uh, the semester, the semester this fall 2020, okay? So the very first question is, so what is the cyber battlefield? Right. What is the, because the problem is if you're talking about security and controls, 
it may it basically implies that you know there's some kind of an adversary right you know you know if you have a control and it's some you know it's because if you have a fence it's because at some point you want to keep something up right and so it's it's kind of the same idea so it's sort of a battlefield um and you have you have to have um a definition for it so so what is this cyber battlefield? So it's really the digital data, computers, operating systems, programs, networks, the internet, systems of programs communicating over the network, you know, the World Wide Web. So it's everything, right? The entire infrastructure that is this digital um, landscape that we, that we currently have. That's really where things are happening, right? And so that is, that is the, the realm, if you will. So what are we actually defending? Are we defending the servers? Is that what we're defending? The physical boxes, the computers, what are we actually trying to secure? Who can tell me that? Data. Data, right? A lot of the time, what we're trying to protect is the data or or the reputation, because it could turn out that, you know, it doesn't really matter if they steal the data, but the fact that they stole it makes people think that the company, you know, has, is not very efficient. And so that disrupts um, their, the impression, right? The impression. So again, for instance, if Zoom, you know, right now someone started attacking the servers at Zoom and all classes went down, you know, that's a, a, would be a big headache for, for Zoom, right? So you definitely want to have a combination, you know, because there isn't just one solution to the problem, right? You want to have a combination of multiple uh, controls. And so that would be a combination of legislation, enforcement from law enforcement, and also, of course, having secure, uh, you know, controls, uh, security, you know, backup systems and so on, okay? So as you said, we are actually defending uh, a lot of those things. And so we wanna frame that in, again, going back to the idea of framing it in uh, with the principles of information assurance. So confidentiality, integrity, and now we can, I can take your answer and say, okay, yeah, we wanna achieve confidentiality of the data, integrity of the data, availability of the data and so on. All of these things that are very important. So uh, the answer basically states, understanding the answer will help us understand what attacks are and how to defend against them. And even help us understand what we really want when we ask for security. Okay, so all of these are really important. So we are not interested in just protecting the computers because you know otherwise, if you just want to protect a computer, you simply, you know, turn it off and, and put it in a, in a safe, right? So that's definitely not, the computers need to be running. And what we want to protect is the availability of that, that computer, the integrity of that computer, and the uh, confidentiality of that computer. So we have information systems that store, process, and transmit data to different parts of the system in order to provide services. Um, you know, and it, it can be any kind of service. So again, we go back to what we, you know, the thing that we want. We want the following key attributes to stay true, right? We want, and now notice that before we only had three, now we've added a couple more. So now we have confidentiality, integrity, availability, non-repudiation, and authentication. Do you see that? Guys? Yes. Right. Great. So I think, uh, I think we're going to stop here for today. Um, this is a good stopping point on, uh, on Thursday, we will start with the lab. So please, again, try to have your VMware and, um, and the VM ready to go. Um, I will pick up because I'll remember where I left off by simply looking at this on Tuesday. So on Tuesday, I will probably start here, or if not, maybe on Thursday, I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about this. I'll think about it 
but I definitely want to give you a lot of time on Thursday to just get started with your first lab. I realize for a lot of you, it'll probably be the first time that you're doing things in a certain way. And so I want to make sure that we're doing things. So please have your VM ready so that way you can, during the class time, um, get started and at least solve one problem during that lab time. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah, I think so. Yep. All yeah, right, good. So I'll stay a, a few minutes um, just in case some of you have any questions for me. Otherwise, if you don't have questions for me, uh, you know, feel free to log off from this. But if you have questions, just stay and I would be happy to take your questions. All right, thank you very much. See you Thursday. Have See a good Thursday. one. See you Thursday. See you Thursday. Excuse me, Professor Kalix. Yes, go ahead, please. Uh, the one question I wanted to ask was, yes. I know how you mentioned that the Ubuntu VM that, we, yes. that you want us to download, that's not ready as is. We have to make some configurations. It, you don't have to do configurations. The thing is, because the, the, the files are so big, it's kind of in a compressed state. And so what you have to do is you go to VMware, and in VMware, there's an option where it says something like, um, if I remember correctly, create, you have to create a VM. That's really what you have to do. And so you really do create a VM from hard disk. I think it's something like that. And so in that option, um, you select it. And then from there, it, you're going to have an option where you can select what you downloaded from the website and the, the VMware will create the, the virtual machine for you. Okay, so you're not you're not opening an existing virtual machine. You're creating a new one. Based that's right. That. That's right. Uh, the way that they store this in the seed labs is that they used to have the VMs ready to go. It's not that you have to do configurations. It's that they just have like the image that, but you have to create the the actual VM and you do it on VMware. Yes. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Excellent. Any other questions? All right, so uh, feel free to ask questions. Otherwise, you know, you can um, log off and I will see you guys on Thursday.